Well, a possible coaching change in Chicago may spell the end of your hopes for Caleb Williams heading to Washington. We're going to talk about that in this video starting right now. And welcome back to another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. My name is Greg, and this channel is dedicated to the Washington Commanders, soon to be one of the best, one of the top franchises in the NFL. You mark my words, it's going to happen if Josh Harris has anything to do with it. If you're down with that, please make sure you have subscribed to this channel. And when you do subscribe, make sure you also hit that notification bell so you will never miss another video release. So the Chicago Bears have been interviewing Cliff Kingsbury, the USC a coach who coached Caleb Williams in college for their possible offensive coordinator a vacancy. And if they wind up hiring Cliff, you might as well go ahead and stamp Caleb Williams' tickets, Chicago. Because I'm telling you right now, it's going to happen. Caleb Williams is likely going to be a Chicago Bear. And if Caleb Williams is a Chicago Bear, then... What are you going to do? Because here's here's the thing. Uh, I put out a video about a couple of weeks ago talking about how that maybe the Washington Commanders should consider just trading down, picking up some more higher round draft picks, really filling out their roster because, <clears throat> excuse me, we, we still needed help. Of, of course, you know, all, along the offensive line, we need to look at linebacker. Um, <clears throat> we could use some more help in the secondary. So, you know, we've got a lot of holes to fill. And if you listen to Adam Peters' press conference, he said he's going to build this team through the draft. He will supplement with free agency, but he's not building this team up through free agency. He's going to take the draft, and the draft is going to be what he uses primarily to build this team. So having said that, that's what really honestly supported my idea a couple of weeks ago that maybe the number two pick should be shopped around as far as uh, someone wanting to move up to possibly uh, look at drafting one of those top two quarterbacks. Now, here's the thing. A lot of you guys really hated me for posting that video um, because a lot of you guys were all in for Caleb Williams. I mean, you know, Short of, of really calling me some pretty bad names, uh, you know, and and questioning my my um, knowledge of football as far as why would I can even consider that knowing that we have generational quarterbacks and you're picking so high, why would you not pick a quarterback at number two? In fact, there's people who are still saying we need to trade up to number one, which I'm sorry, but um, are you kin to Dan Snyder? That should not happen. That now that I will I will die on any hill for that. Uh, I mean, no, uh, we're not trading up to number one. That is Dan Snyder move right there. But here's the thing, folks: we're at number two. And I know a lot of the media said you have to pick a quarterback at number two, and I tend to I, I definitely understand that that idea, and I'm not. I'm really not opposed to that idea whatsoever. Um, I understand you probably do need to consider picking a quarterback at number two, especially if you're yeah if you're picking at number two, and there are two quarterbacks on the board. There's probably only going to be one quarterback at that point on the board who is worthy of a number two pick. You're probably going to have to really consider picking that quarterback unless unless there is another team that is going to move up and say, hey, we are going to give you this bounty of draft picks if you let us move up to your spot so that we can draft Drake uh, Drake May. And you do have to consider that because there are other quarterbacks. Maybe they're not at the caliber and maybe they are. Uh, I think we will, I think we'll really start to see a little bit clearer picture of that once we start to go through the combine, pro days, and things like that, and and uh, you know you get the scouts and, and the coaching um, 
staff really, you know, getting a chance to see these guys firsthand and sit down and talking with them and that sort of thing. But getting back to the point of this video, really, if the Chicago Bears goes out and they actually do hire Cliff Kingsbury as the offense coordinator for Chicago Bears, then you could pretty much guarantee that Caleb Williams is headed to Chicago. So for a lot of you folks who were all in for Caleb Williams, now what are your thought process? Because a lot of you guys as well said that you would not pick Drake May because he's nothing but Sam Howell 2.0. He's either Sam Howell 2.0 or he's Mitch Trubisky 2.0. You just really gave Drake May down the road and you said no. And that would be a horrible pick. He probably doesn't even deserve to be you know, picked at at number two anyway, Caleb Williams or bust. And so now that it could be very likely that, I mean, it's probably almost a sure thing that the Chicago Bears will pick Caleb Williams unless a team does give the Chicago Bears this bounty of picks uh, to the point where it would be maddening for Chicago not to trade out of that, that first round. Now, suddenly, a lot of you are like, well, I guess either maybe we figure out a way to get Justin Fields from Chicago, or we get Caleb Boyd, or not Caleb Woods, we get Drake May. And so now it's like suddenly Drake May doesn't look so bad because it's not likely that we're going to get Caleb Williams. So, yeah, let's look at Drake May now. And I'm sitting here going, well, wait a minute. Now, you know, I was considering, okay, if we are going to get a quarterback at number two, let's just stay at number two. And if Drake May's there, then pick Drake May because, to me, he's more of your prototypical quarterback. He's going to be the guy who's still going to be very athletic, who can run, who you know, who's got a really good arm, who's big. Who's, he's much bigger than Caleb Williams. And he's the guy that I feel like in time is probably going to be ultimately – probably going to be the better quarterback. And so, honestly, I think that you look at him as a better fit, especially in, in the Ben Johnson type of offense. I honestly think that Drake May may fit a little bit better than Caleb Williams. Having said that, <clears throat> I, I, I just find it just, it's, it's almost comical that, you know, suddenly now it's like, well, if Caleb Williams is out, then yeah, let, let's go all in for Drake May. I'm still on the fence with drafting quarterback that high. I really am. Um, you know, I don't mind it if we do. If we do wind up with Caleb Williams, I'm going to fully support it. You know, because why would I want him to fail? You know, I want him to succeed and be the best quarterback that's ever laced, the, laced his boots up. You know, I mean, I, I want him to go out there and be a Hall of Famer. So I'm going to support him 150%. But I'm just saying that I'm also keeping my options open and considering the fact that this team has so many holes that they need to fill. And it could be the fact that because that Chicago is making, could be, and it could be done by today, I don't know. <clears throat> by the time that I release this video, Kingsbury may be the next offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears. And if that's a fact, you might, might as well go ahead and you know, put it in permanent ink that Caleb Williams is heading to Chicago because I honestly don't see how it's not going to happen at that point. So knowing that, then I think you do have to put it on the table and considering the fact that, sh that Washington should consider moving down in the draft, picking up more higher round draft picks. <clears throat> Excuse me, they can still draft a quarterback if they want to. Um, it's likely they'll wind up probably, uh, I, I would say it's more than likely that Washington's going to hire Ben Johnson as their head coach. I know I'm going out on a limb here in this video and just really saying a lot of things that may not come to fruition, but really looking like there's a lot of things that's likely that, it, that is going to happen. So, you know, I have to say that, let's just say this is going to happen. So... Ben Johnson 
who's a former quarterback himself, former UNC quarterback, I, I might add. Um, so Ben Johnson, uh, we know he he's done wonders for Jared Goff. Um, he comes into Washington. He could probably do wonders with Sam Howell. Um, he could do wonders with you know whatever quarterback. And again, analytics is going to come into play. Um, you know, you've got a guy with you know and Adam Peters who's going to have an eye for talent as well. And so you're going to have a lot of things going for you in the the uh, drafting process that was simply not there in the last 15 or 20 years in Washington. And honestly, if you probably want to go back even further, <clears throat> I know we all really love Charlie Casserly, but Charlie didn't have necessarily um, the the insight to, to draft a quarterback high He's sure, <laughs> um, you know, he really missed on that one. He actually hit pretty good on, on Gus Farad. But, um, you know, I, I'll just say that I, I really think that we need to look at, still we need to look at trading down, and that option should not be off the table whatsoever. Um, because here it is, folks. I do agree, we need a quarterback. Um because, yeah, Sam Howell does, you know, at the end of the season, he was not ready. He was not ready yet. And I think Ron Rivera pretty much admitted that um, in his um, in his interviews, his post-interviews. I think he kind of admitted that he put too much on Sam Howell. And likely, Sam Howell was not quite ready to take on such a challenge as of yet. And, uh, yeah, I think you pretty much admit they broke Sam Howe. So, that being said, yes, we do need a quarterback. And I feel like in the end, we probably will wind up drafting Drake May. And I think for a lot of you folks, you're going to have to be satisfied with Drake May. Uh, and I think that he's going to be a good quarterback for this team. But if not, then I think your other option is, I don't think you need to give up a King's Ransom for Justin Fields, and I think Chicago's going to expect a King's Ransom for Justin Fields. Um, so I, I think any any type of move for, for that, where you're giving up high-round draft picks for Justin Fields is a Dan Snyder move. I really do. And why would Chicago be giving up Justin Fields uh, for Caleb Williams? That To me, that indicates Justin Fields isn't the guy either. So if Chicago's given up on Justin Fields after such a short time, then why would Washington, again, the, I feel like this is a Dan Steiner move. You want Washington to come in and feel like, oh, you know, they, they, have, they have really gotten something really good with Justin Fields. Chicago just know how to use them. Maybe that's true. Maybe it's not. But... I really honestly, at the end of the day, I feel like when you look at the whole situation, to me, the best moves, um, and I'm not a general manager, I admit that, I'm just uh, some flunky out here with Mike, but to me, honestly, in my best opinion, <laughs> my guess, best guessful, guessful opinion, as I'm making up Greg words, is simply that Washington should either just stay at number two, draft Drake May, because that's who's going to be available at number two, or they look at trade partners and they trade down, and they're still in the position to maybe possibly draft Jaden Daniels and also have a bounty of other draft picks that they can use to uh, really build up the offensive line, to get linebackers, to get a secondary that's going to have a couple of more corners that's going to compete for the starting positions. That's what you need to do because, again, if you listen to Josh Harris, he wants to build this thing quickly. His whole motto has been thoroughly and rapidly. As that's what he's been talking about when he did the, the general manager search and also with the head coaching search. 
And I think that's going to be his motto when it comes to building this team quickly but thoroughly. And you can't build a team quickly and thoroughly if you're going to put all your eggs into one basket and, you know, you're going to actually wind up maybe wanting to trade up and lose draft picks knowing that your general manager has come out and said that he wants to build through the draft. Well, how can you build through the draft if you're giving up draft picks just to move up to draft a quarterback that everybody's like, oh, but he's a generational type of player. You know how many generational players were projected to be so, and then they turned out to not be that? So let, let's stop being Dan Snyder's about this and really start looking at this from a perspective of building the entire team and not just looking at one position. Folks, I know this is going to cause uh, a bit of a uh, discussion, so all I'll say is uh, keep it respectful, keep it clean. Let's just keep on the subject of talking about the football and not getting personal about it in the comments section. I hope you have a great day, great evening. Whenever you get a chance to actually start watching this video, I'll try to have this uploaded this evening. That said, I will see you in the next one.